morning guys. It is Super Bowl Sunday and before we get started into all the Super Bowl stuff, me and Mama Bee are going to record a Valentine's Day Try It Tuesday, Valentine's themed kind of goodies that we're going to try out for Try It Tuesday. Um, I'm wearing this little top with hearts on it so I want it to be themed and I got these little heart earrings. I did my hair into like a little twisty side bun. And I kind of have a purpley eye today yeah, and, a, and a pink lip. I don't wear pink lips very often. Um, why is this lighting kind of weird? There we go. Um, also, I have been really into football this year. And I'm kind of bummed. I'm really bummed that the Cardinals didn't make it into the Super Bowl. But I think I'm going to root for the Broncos because I like to root for the team that not everyone is going to be rooting for. <laughs> I feel like the Panthers, like, everyone is rooting for them. And since I'm kind of annoyed at the ginormous win they had on the Cardinals to get into the Super Bowl, I don't really feel like rooting for them. <laughs> so I'm going to go for the Broncos today. We're going to be making three, like, appetizer recipes, too, that I'll show you later. And yeah, now I'm just waiting for Mama Bee to get here. This is a first. I'm ready before her. <laughs> hey everyone, happy Super Bowl. It is a great day to start making some great appetizers and we're gonna show you some of our favorites. The first one we're gonna do is a slow cooker chicken buffalo meatballs. Yeah. So easy to make and you're gonna love them. What you're going to need is some traditional panko breadcrumbs. You're going to need a package of ground chicken, one egg, some celery seed, some red hot if you want to make it hot. But that's the wing, buffalo wing but this sauce, is the, not just rice. Oh, excuse me. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's the sauce we use, the red hot wing, wing sauce. buffalo yeah. sauce. And this is for later, for dipping, some blue cheese. And we also have some celery. And we have some celery too. too. All right, guys. So we have the ground chicken in here. And I just put some Mrs. Dash because you know it wouldn't be a recipe without my garlic and herb Mrs. Dash. Now we have one teaspoon of celery seed, one egg, and a half a cup of the panko traditional breadcrumbs. Throw that in and then you with your washed hands go in there and start mixing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Make your little snowballs. Well, that sounds crunchy. Those Ooh, they're things. yummy I yeah. bet. Mm -hmm. It smells good already because the herbs. It smells yummy. Okay now we're rolling them into one inch balls. We're using a tablespoon yeah. to measure them to make them a little bit more even or you can just pinch it and yeah. eyeball it. I pinch it but Melissa was said maybe we should do that so they can be really consistent because when we what we're going to do is we're going to put them in the frying pan to get them brown on all sides before we actually put them in the Slow crock cooker. pot. Yeah. So yeah. All right. So we put some olive oil in the pan and now what I'm doing is I'm just getting them brown as you can see before we put them in the crock pot just to give them a little sear. So now we have the meatballs in the slow cooker. We're going to put them on low. Low heat for two to three hours until the center is not pink. We're going to cover them with a cup of the buffalo sauce. We might put more if it's not completely covered. I think we though. should use the whole jar because oh it's not enough. All right. Okay. The heck with measuring, apparently. Yes, because... <laughs> Which smells so buffalo-y. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. That's yeah. what you want. Yeah, cover those babies. Cover them. All right. Third and final appetizer we're gonna have are the Philly cheesesteak crescent pinwheels. So you're gonna need some sliced steak. This is in the freezer section from Steak. Steak Owns. <laughs> Mom knew this. I was like, what the heck is that? My I mama used to make them. Never have had this in my life. So you need eight ounces of this. Crescent rolls again. We're going to do a cup of green and red peppers. Mrs. Dash for flavoring for the steak. Alfredo sauce. This is for dipping later. You're going to need the 
chive and onion spreadable cream cheese. And this did not call for it, but we're gonna add a little bit of mozzarella in it as well. Cause I mean, what's a, a cheesesteak? Yeah, cheese. what's a Philly cheesesteak without some mozzarella? That's what so, I'm saying. <laughs> those are all the ingredients. So I just went ahead and chopped up a red and green bell pepper. You're just gonna use about a cup of this. We're gonna also use this in our dip, so that's why we chopped up more. We always use this Pampered Chef chopper to get everything nice and tiny. Then I cook the steak them, so you just kind of flake around, and that's good because that's what you're gonna put on the crescent dough. And then what you're gonna do is get the bell peppers and green peppers and put them in here. Yeah, we're gonna cook those too right now. We just poured them in there, a cup of the peppers and cooking that all together. So half of each. Okay, so now what we have is we took the crescent rolls out of the packaging and again, put it into a rectangle, pressed all the open holes that were in it for the crescents. And now Melissa is going to spread a half a cup of the cream cheese and chive uh, stuff. So <laughs> cream cheese. <laughs> cream cheese, I can't talk. Um, so that it'll be a good taste I'm that. just putting it in like little sections so yeah. it's easier to spread. So that way we can spread. I would think too, if you want, you can leave it out for a little bit. Of course, it always spreads better when it's a little warm. Not too long, but the spatula is doing right, good, right, Melissa? Yeah, it's okay. pretty easy. Good. Okay, so now that we have the cream cheese all spread out, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the shredded mozzarella on the top of that. So we took the liberty of straining the vegetables and the meat look, because there's some the oil, oil that comes out of it. You don't want that dripping all, all over, over the place in your oven. And so then we went ahead and did that. You just kind of spread it all through. And so you can help me if you want. Yeah, just like get that a little bit in the corners and everything. Because we're going to roll this. Yeah, we'll show you that next step in a second here. Oh, this is... Okay, now we're going to roll it into the pinwheel. So I'm going to start it off with the parchment. parchment paper just to give me a little bit of a start because yeah the first start is always the hardest isn't it always in everything you do in life Cup pinching also as i go because remember this was also crescent rolls so i want to make sure that i close as much as possible because you can see it's opening so this is what it looks like, all nice and rolled. We're now going to cut this into 12 pieces and place it onto the cookie sheet two inches apart. Then you're going to go ahead and bake it for 14 to 16 minutes or until it's golden brown. Okay, so here are all of them cut. Now don't get discouraged if it's a little messy when you cut them, just pinch them a little bit together. We're also going to sprinkle a little bit of this cheese on the top of each one. And then we're gonna pop them in the oven. So I just want to mention this foundation to you guys again. I forgot how much I absolutely love this. It's the Jouer Matte Moisture Tint with SPF 15. This is the oil free. And I just love this foundation. It looks so beautiful on. It has kind of a moussey texture and it doesn't feel super heavy and it's just awesome. It has great coverage too. I'm in the shade Porcelain. Really, it still has a yellow tone to it though. So if you are more of a pink, porcelain shade this will not work for you um, but it's like light with a little bit of yellow tone to it I'm more neutral but it still works for me I just had to mention this I'm loving it again look what just came in the mail a really cute package from Pacifica they always give us the most beautiful boxes I use these in my makeup room this one's really pretty red and inside was a little mini of their Coco Pure Makeup Removing Wipes I haven't used this version of their makeup wipes yet so I'll have to try that out and then they have this new little roll-on trio called the daydreamer and it has three roller balls the Indian coconut nectar Tuscan blood orange and Tahitian gardenia this Tuscan blood orange one smells so yummy 
and I always have loved this one. And then there's also a hand cream duo in Tuscan Blood Orange and Indian Coconut Nectar. So thank you so much Pacifica. I always love their products and this is just like a little sheet that talks about it. You can find it at Target. Look what came in the mail today. Kylie Lippies. I'm gonna probably do the swatches tonight because I want this to go up right away for you guys. So is this not the coolest postcard? A special note from Kylie. I did purchase these by the way and it was not easy. <laughs> Look at how beautiful the box is even. So I got all three of the new shades. This baby is called Posy K. Get back up there. Coco K and Mary Jo K. And these come as a liquid lipstick and a lip pencil. I can't wait to try them. Hey guys, don't mind the red nose. I just put moisturizer on it. So anyways, can I just say I am absolutely insane. It's almost 1130 at night and I have to go to work and wake up at five. But I wanted to film the swatch video and review video of the Kylie Lip Kits, the new three shades. I ordered them for you guys so that I could do a review and post it right away. I just got the package in the mail today. The review is based on the very first lip I ever got from the collection of shades. So I did try out the formula for a while before posting the review, but the lip swatches like from the three new ones were brand new ones that I just got today. So I have been doing that for like the last filming and editing and getting it up and getting everything ready probably for the last four hours. Three and a half, four hours. But I just have to say, I love you. And that's why I do stuff, like crazy stuff like this. Just wish I could do YouTube full time, but unfortunately at the level I'm at right now, that's not possible. But someday I'll have all the time in the world to make a bunch of videos, hopefully for you guys. <sighs> but I'm gonna have to pretty much triple. <laughs> <laughs> triple the level I'm at right now for that to happen so hopefully in the future that I'm gonna get my butt to bed but I just thought I let you know if you haven't seen the video I'll link it down below oh I just realized something I forgot to link one thing in the description box guess I'm gonna go do that and then go to bed good morning guys I'm on my way to work it's Friday I'm so happy um, I wanted to show you my eye look today I don't know if it looks as good in camera but I really like it. It's kind of like a soft brown smoky eye. And I wore pink blush today, which I rarely do. And I still don't know how I feel about it. It's like, you know, light pink. I guess it looks fine, but I'm just so used to wearing corals and neutral blushes that when I wear a pink one, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm wearing so much blush, but it's really not <laughs> that much. And I'm wearing this again. This is from Torrid. I wear it all the time because that's so comfortable and I love it. And I have like my little bandeau from Express too. I love this thing. It's so pretty. It has the crisscross design on the back too. That's it. You guys, look at this adorable heart-shaped donut from Krispy Kreme. It's called the Be Mine. Isn't that so cute? It's so perfect for me. I just had to have one because it was so so cute. I saw an advertisement about it. I was like, I have to take a picture of that cute little honeybee donut. <laughs> I'm having some coffee in my Donut Ever Let Me Go mug. This was from Target last year. It's so cute. I just had to show you that. And I also, I also ended up getting two of these little sprinkle ones too. I'm going to give these to my family, but I'm going to take pictures with them for my Instagram first. I just thought they were also so cute. We're going to Whole Foods to pick up some goodies to make for our Valentine dinner. Hey guys, welcome back to Cooking in the Hive. We're making chocolate hazelnut dipped strawberries for Valentine's today. And Mama Bee is next to me. Hi. She's cleaning off the strawberries for us with a damp um, paper towel. Just because, why did you say mom? Well, if you dip them, if you put them in water, they'll get mushy. Yeah, and the strawberries. we're not taking the stems off because we want it's pretty. easier for them to be dipped that way. We got ours at Whole Foods. I'm not sure. You probably could find them anywhere like They're that, too. They're beautiful, though. So we have 12 strawberries, some milk chocolate morsels, or any kind of chocolate that you want, Nutella, 
and some chopped up hazelnuts. So that's optional if you have a nut allergy. Well, if you had a nut allergy, you probably couldn't have that either because it's hazelnuts bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to get started now. So I put about a, a little over a cup of the milk chocolate chips, and now we're going to go ahead and melt them in 20 second intervals into the microwave until it's fully melted. So we have the melted chocolate. We're now going to take two heaping tablespoons of the hazelnut spread. Ooh, go, Melissa. And mix that in, too. Oh, baby. And we also finely chopped in the blender the hazelnuts, so they're more like a powder. Let me show you. See? Very fine. Mm. How is that, Melissa? Yummy. Okay, now we're going to take the strawberry. Make sure you get all the little greens away. Dip that baby on all sides. Go, Melissa. Ooh. Let it drip off a little. <laughs> Let's move this over. There you go. And then just gently, and then gently roll dip around. Dip it around. Make sure to show a little bit of the chocolate still. And put it down on parchment paper. And a little chocolate got in there. And then you can eat the chocolate that drips off. Mm. Mm. Yummy. Keep going, Melissa. Again, just wiggle it and dip it on all the sides. Don't be shy with that chocolate, girlfriend. We're going to do one without. Yep. And here are the strawberries after they've chilled a while in the fridge. They're so pretty. guys, I also wanted to show you how beautiful the table is set up for Valentine's Day. This is at my mom's house. So she pretty much got everything at Pier 1. These are from Pier 1, the plates here, and the glasses were actually from Holiday, but they were on sale and they look perfect for Valentine's. So I just thought it was set up so pretty. It matches her decor really well since she has all reds too. So for our Valentine dinner, we're making, or Mama Bee, I should clarify, <laughs> is making Surf and Turf, which we got some amazing filet mignon, six ounce steaks from Whole Foods. Yep. And then and some shrimp. Some shrimp that I marinated in garlic, olive oil, um, salt, pepper, Mrs. Dash, some lime. Mmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also making, get out of the way, Harley, honey, some finger link potatoes. And I also had them in garlic, olive oil, um, some, some, oh, what I forget? Um, rosemary. rosemary and salt vinegar, I mean salt, pepper, excuse me. And we're also gonna have some fresh asparagus that yeah. we got from Costco too. Right. That's it.